Hello everyone. Today's topic of discussion is seismic design and detailing of the column beam joints of a special moment processing frame. So in today's session, we will try to cover the importance of designing and detailing of joints. So why do we do the joint design and detailing? And what is the importance of performing the joint checks? That is the shear strengths of the joints and the flexural strength of the. But before we start to understand the importance of joint check, we will understand what is ductility. Ductility is nothing but a capacity in the material to sustain large deformations before, before it actually breaks or it reaches, reaches its breaking point. Most important part here is in this process there is no loss of appreciable strength and as a result the structure absorbs a huge amount of energy before it actually fails or breaks. So in ductility this thing will happen. If you look at this graph on the right hand side the stress in the structure remains almost the same, but the strain has increased by maybe four or five times. As a result, the area under curve or the absorbed energy is very, very large before the structure actually fails. Coming to the images on the left hand side, if we see the figure A, it shows brittle failure where the failure is sudden. And it shows that the entire cross section has failed abruptly. Coming to figure B, it shows some part of netting that has happened. And then the brittle failure has happened. Which means the failure is brittle and also a little bit of ductile behavior has been developed. But the ductile behavior is not complete. Now coming to figure C, it shows breakage after a considerable netting. And at this very small cross section, it has actually broken, which shows a complete ductile behavior. So this in short is ductility. Now, how does ductility help us? What ductility does is, it creates a ductile link amongst the rest of the non-ductile links. It keeps on absorbing energy and keeps on elongating itself and simultaneously at the same time, allows other links to perform their duty. Now this is very very essential. If we see under a ductile system, the structure will undergo large deformations before it actually collapses. So in case of earthquake event, where it may last for a minute or so, structure undergoes heavy damage and if the structure falls suddenly within a short period of time or immediately after the earthquake happens, then there are big chances of maximum amount of people within the structure getting trapped. Now, ductility helps us sustain that situation because of the presence of ductility, the structure continues to absorb the force for a considerable amount of time which allows people to escape by and hence leading to saving of human life. Now in ductility itself there are two parts. One is the member itself becomes ductile which is very well known to everybody such that we provide closely spaced shear links and such that the concrete core is fully confined and gains strength through the confinement. The second part is joints. Now joints are very critical. So in the images below, if we see the first photograph, the structure above has simply rotated about the joint of the column. That is the top of the column. As if the structure has rotated. If we see the structure below in the photograph one itself, it is intact. But the structure above has failed at a joint with plastic hinge formation at the top of the column. So, at any point in time, a plastic hinge formation in the column is not at all desirable. 
In the second photograph, we see that there is a joint failure between the top of the column and upper column. That is, if we see the top of the column of the column at the lower level and bottom of the column of the upper column, the joint has failed. And if we look at it closely, the structure is not damaged, but the joint has gone for a toss, which is very, very crucial and not acceptable as well. So what are the possible modes of joint failures? One is the failure of the beam rebar. Now, earthquake is a lateral load, which is sort of a shaking or a vibratory load. So in this situation, structure moves in a left and a right, left, right pattern. So at a given joint, there is always a condition where the structure is moving either in a left or right direction. The red and green arrows here shows us that particular condition where the structure or a joint in specific moves in a left right direction. In such a quick situation where the change of direction due to the earthquake lateral force is very fast, the bars in the beams which are anchored inside the column has a possibility that it may come out of the anchorage and that can be one kind of a failure. The second type is shear in the concrete. So we can imagine various forces acting on the joints like there is a vertical load from the column above. There is a tensile load at top of the bar in the beam. There is a compressive load at the bottom of the bar in the beam again. And similar forces and movements in the column above and below the joint. All of these leads to shear, that is the diagonal shear and concrete may fail in that. So this is a second type of a failure for joint. And lastly, the beam may remain strong, the joint may remain strong, but the column just above or below the joint may crush due to excessive compression, which may result in hinge formation on the column, which is again not at all desirable. So these are the three types of failure that can happen at a joint. So all of these things basically points to that if we have a strong column and weak beam, we will achieve a better ductility because columns carry vertical loads from multiple floors of the structure, whereas a beam failure can be a local failure. A joint or a plastic hinge should always be formed in a beam and not in the column. So how do we design a joint for ductility? In this, there are two parts again. One is shear demand. As we saw that there is a high amount of shear generated. In this, the strong column weak beam is achieved from the joint failure check for shear. For this, the shear in the joint is calculated on the basis of plastic hinge formation at beam on both the sides to the higher level. So 1.5 times the capacity of FY is considered in the plastic hinge formation. And then the effective area of the column that actually resists the shear that is worked out on the confinement or the end condition of the beam that is carrying it. So it is purely a demand based on the detailing and size of the column. I repeat, it is a demand which is based on the detailing and the size of the column. And it has nothing to do with the forces from analysis apart from a small amount of shear that gets added from the upper column. So now let's look at how this is done in RCDC. In RCDC, the first step is to identify a joint and the beams that are framing into that particular joint. For example, in this figure, if we see column C1 has beams on two sides. Column C2 has beams on three sides. And column C4, C7 has beams on four sides. So this is how a joint is identified with the column and its corresponding beams and also the direction in which those beams are connected to any particular column. 
This leads to the classification of joints. Whether a joint has a two or a three or four beams framing into it. Second part of the joint check is the flexural check. Wherein the beams which are framing into the column can have a plastic hinges formed on the opposite sides. So say left beam may have a plastic hinge formed at top and simultaneously the bottom of the right beam may have the plastic hinge condition. Now this is basically considered a sway from left and sway from right condition. And in this, the main principle is that moment capacity of the column at the joint has to be say 20% or 40% more. Now the percentage will depend upon the design code with which the joint check has been formed. So the joint, so the moment capacity of the column at the joint has to be either 20% or 40% higher than the moment capacity of the beams. Now coming here again, the moment capacity of the beam is purely based on the reinforcement provided in the beam and not from the demand from analysis. And for columns, it is sometimes based on either actual force or sometimes based on the pure moment capacity based on which clauses we are looking at. Now again, similar to joint check procedure we looked into earlier, the joints are identified based on the beam framing into a column and at any particular joint, the check is performed. 